four, eight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul, our heavenly patrons, and a number of parish communities are named after these two great apostles. As we continue this Eucharistic celebration, let's remember and pray for our parish community. As Peter the Apostle and Paul the Apostles, how they bore witness to their master till the end of the last breath. Let's also be inspired by these two great saints that in our lives too, that we may strive to live out the values of the gospel. Let's call to mind our shortcomings and failures. We shall pray together, I confess, to Almighty God and to you my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God how mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, how mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, how mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, how mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now we shall pray together the Gloria. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory lord god heavenly king oh god almighty father lord jesus christ only begotten son lord god lamb of god son of the father you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who on the solemnity of the apostles Peter and Paul, give us the noble and holy joy of this day. Grant, we pray, that your church may in all things follow the teaching of, of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and uh, ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James, the brother of John, killed by the sword. And when he saw that this was pleasing to the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. It was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He had him taken into custody and put in prison under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. He intended to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter thus was being kept in prison, but by prayer by the church was fervently being made to God on his behalf. On the very night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter, secured by double chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while outside the door guards kept watch on the prison. Suddenly the angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in his cell. He tapped Peter on the side and awakened him, saying, Get up quickly. The chains fell from his wrists. The angel said to him, Put on your belt and your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Put on your cloak and follow me. So he followed him out, not realizing what was happening through the angel was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first guard, then the second, and came to the iron gate leading out of the city, which opened for them by itself. They emerged and made their way down an alley, and suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter recovered his senses and said, Now I know for certain that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from the hands of Herod and from all the Jewish people who were expecting the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, the Lord delivered me from all my fears. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord Lord delivered me from all my fears. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord Lord delivered me from all my fears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard and from all his distress, he saved him. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Bless the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I, Paul, am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that through me the proclamation might be completed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I the Lord will rescue me from every evil threat, and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he said to his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the solemnity of our heavenly patrons, Saints Peter and Paul. These two great apostles, we can say, are the two pillars of the church. We we'll listen to the gospel passage of today. Peter's confession that Jesus is the Son of God. You know, when Jesus began his ministry, there was a lot of talk about who he was. You know, he was a rabbi, he was a prophet, you know, he was a miracle worker, a teacher, power excellence. But Peter said he was Christ, that means the Messiah, the son of the living God. On that faith, Jesus says, he will begin, uh, sorry, he will build the church. So Peter represents church as an institution. As an institution upholding the fundamental teachings and values. You know, sometimes people say, why, you know, the church is slow in coming up with the change of the times. Why don't church go with the changing of culture and time? But fundamentals are fundamentals. Those are the foundation teachings about life about moral, about marriage. These things cannot be changed. So that does not mean that church doesn't evolve or change. That's where Paul comes. His personal experience as well as his missionary dynamism 
Vatican II says very clearly, church and its very nature is a missionary. She's been sent to proclaim the good news to all creation. And Paul brings that missionary dynamism in the church. We'll listen to the second reading of today. You know, Paul shares about his personal experience. Paul, on his way to Damascus, he meets the risen Christ. And Jesus asked him the question, Soul, soul, why do you persecute me? You know, Jesus could have asked, why do you persecute my followers? Or why do you persecute those who have a different faith? But Jesus asked, why do you persecute me? And in Paul's letter, that is what he call, um, that is the biggest theme we can say. Church is the mystical body of Christ. And his personal encounter with the person of Jesus Christ. And in today's letter, he shares about his personal experience. Paul says that he fought the good fight. He ran the race. And now he waiting for that reward. You know, very often people ask the same question. You know, I believe in Jesus. And, uh, you know, I pray to him. And we have a good relationship. So why do I come to the church? Why do I be, be part of a church or a parish? So that's where sometimes we can err. Christianity is not just my personal search for God. We live our faith as a community. That's where Paul lived his missionary dynamism in the church. That's where these two great apostles are the two great pillars of our church. One stands for church as the missionary dynamism of the church. Please rise. Being the solemnity, now we will recite together the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day, 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. Acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For our Holy Father, the successor of Peter, that the good Lord may grant him wisdom in leading and guiding the church. We pray to the Lord. Missionaries all over the world, especially those who are facing persecution for the sake of their faith, we pray to the Lord. Christians all over the world may live out the spiritual dynamism in the church. We pray to the Lord. For an increase of vocation to priesthood and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. For our parish community, as we commemorate today the feast of our heavenly patron, that we may be inspired by these two great apostles in living out the values of the gospel, we pray to the Lord. In the silence of our hearts, let's place our personal intentions before the Lord. Let's remember and pray for all the faithful departed, especially for Ed Slavic, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. God, our loving Father, we bring our prayers and petitions before you. As we commemorate today, our heavenly patrons grant us the grace through their powerful intercession that as members of this parish community, we may be inspired by their example in living out the values of the gospel. Make this prayer through Christ uh, our Lord.
precious and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God uh, the Almighty Father may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name for our good and good of all of his holy church may the prayer of the apostles O Lord accompany the sacrificial gift that we be present to your name for consecration and may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice through Christ uh, our Lord Amen. the Lord be with you lift up your hearts let's give thanks to the Lord our God it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and every way to give you thanks Lord Holy Father Almighty and eternal God for by your providence the blessed apostles Peter and Paul brings us joy Peter foremost in confessing the faith Paul its outstanding preacher Peter who established the early church from the remnant of Israel Paul master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call and so each in a different way gather together the one family of Christ and revered together throughout the world they share one modest crown and therefore with all the angels and saints we praise you as without the end we acclaim indeed holy O Lord the fond of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving things broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup We will rise for the Lord Until you come again Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have called us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
humbly we pray that partaking of the body and bread of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, William our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in a mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. How mercy is all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who are pleased to you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the service command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Or lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and uh, ever. Amen. The peace and joy of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him, who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I listen to the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us safe for eternal life. The prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you with all my heart. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already in my heart and unite myself to you completely. Please do not let me ever be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by the sacrament, so to live in the church, that perse persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the apostles, we may be one heart and one soul, made steadfast in your love through Christ uh, our Lord Amen. we shall pray together pray to Saint Michael Saint Michael the Archangel defend us in battle. Saint Michael the Archangel defend us in battle be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil may God rebuke him we humbly pray and do thou O Prince of the heavenly host by the power of God thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls Amen. please bow your heads and pray for God's blessings your response will be Amen may God who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundation graciously bless you through the glorious memories of the holy apostles Peter and Paul Amen and may he who entoured you with the, 
with the teaching and example of the apostles make you under their protection witness to the truth before all Amen. so that through the intercession of the apostles Peter and Paul you may inherit the eternal homeland for by the teaching you possess firmness of faith Amen. Amen. and may the blessings of the Almighty God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever Amen. go forth the mass is ended Thanks be to God. our sending song is number 811 for all the saints number 811 